the i want people to know that the caste is a reality and there are victims of caste every day every passing minute people are being killed and you know anyone who cares about humanity democracy and dignity must care about what is happening to dalits in india and it's very important as human beings we need to relate to each other as communities and fellow beings Oh, my name is Chinnaya Jangam. I am an Associate Professor in the Department of History at Carlton University. I write on the history of Dalits, who are also known as untouchables in India, particularly their political and intellectual history, and uh, the way in which they played a critical role in the making of modern India, particularly during the time of anti-colonial nationalism. Caste system, like... Uh, is a very important foundation for the making of you know, Indian civilization across centuries, uh, where in which the pyramid structure caste system based on the not only hierarchy and inequality, but also idea of purity and pollution are central to the idea of caste. So in this context, what happens is that, you know, the majority of the population are pushed under this so-called lower caste or oppressed caste. and who are made to perform occupations which are deemed polluting and also they have to perform this unpaid and unfree labor and in this context the caste divisions and the caste pollution the so called caste pollution makes nearly 200 200 to 250 million people in india are considered as untouchables who perform unwanted and ignoble professions like cleaning streets and also dealing with manual you know scavenging and also other various types of occupations which normally the so called touchables and also honorable people honorable people will not do so in this context historically dalits are made to work as not only farm laborers but also made to perform occupations which are not considered noble and also uh, dignified so in this context what happens the com- historically the coming of modernity and modern occupations and education led to a new form of social transformation so in this context for the first time in human history dalits were able to access education and that started bringing interesting transformation in terms of awareness about their own rights and also their own oppression and indignity in which they suffered for centuries so in this context dalit consciousness in modern society is part of this acquisition of modern education is central to them and therefore you know uh, even during colonial time when indians were fighting for freedom from british colonial oppression dalits were asking for what is their position in free independent india so therefore they played a critical role in altering the very idea of nation in which the constitution and also social equality and equity were central programs through which they advocated their political rights my own story again has lot to do with the the way in which the story of the larger story of dalit acquisition of education and i am a first generation educated dalit born in a place called telangana and i not only went to school as a first generation but also one of the very rare dalit to get educated and also go to england to do phd on a prestigious scholarship so i did my phd from university of london a place called school of oriental and african studies and after that i was uh, i got a uh, guggenheim foundation's dissertation fellowship to write my final year of phd and then i went to new york university on a post doctoral fellowship at international center for advanced studies and uh, then i taught in the us and moved to canada in 2010 so it is like you know the my story is like a very classic dali story in which because we went to school precisely because of the affirmative action policies introduced by the government of india particularly because of the constitution mandated constitution was drafted by uh, dr b r ambedkar who envisioned reservations are affirmative action as central to the emancipation project of dalits so therefore dalit children like me 
were able to go to schools precisely because of this new laws in post independent india and uh, when i moved to canada in 2010 uh, as an assistant professor in the department of history it is a very different uh, world here people are not only not aware about caste system but also i am like one of those very rare dalits to enter north american academy as a tenure track professor so i am here for the last you know i came in 2010 so almost 14 years of my life is in canada and particularly at colton yeah um, the as an dalit academic one of the rare person to come to canada to teach and also live in north america one of the important challenges we face is that uh, the mainstream discourse on india particularly the south asian diaspora in uh, both in united states and canada is represented by the so called the privileged caste privileged people who represent india in such a way that you know india means non vegetarianism india means you know mahatma gandhi india means you know bollywood india means yoga so these are all very interesting cliches through which they marketed indian culture abroad and this this representation is a very privileged representation it is not the representation of what india is because the most of the immigrants to north america are coming from privileged caste backgrounds and who unlike many other migration stories where in which you know people from middle east or africa or other countries are fleeing civil wars and violence and instability but indian migrants to north america are people who are coming from very privileged and also very rich backgrounds for them moving to north america is looking for good career prospects therefore you know those, those these are all the people who who had english education for generations together for like four or five generations for them to succeed in north america is just a shift in geography from india to north america they write best english they have get best you no know, technical education so therefore south asians particularly indians win you know pulitzer prize to vodical the english prizes in fiction writing because because of their privileges so in this context when i came to india like when i started interacting with people people like i remember two three times i went to said uh, no uh, different receptions people used to surprise that i eat non vegetarian food because feed the people india means vegetarianism but the i told i used to tell people and explain to them that you know 80% of indians eat meat and including beef like is a staple food for many people so in this context what happens is that you no know, these representations not only you no know, erase the history of what happened in history but also what is happening in india so in this context as an historian i write about the dalit predicament in not only in colonial times but also in contemporary india and also i feel that you do know, because i am able to escape caste oppression and i am able to liberate myself from centuries of caste system i also have a social responsibility to speak for my people and also represent what actually is happening so in this context my political you know activism or community activism is part and parcel of my own social my own story as a dalit and i feel that you know as an academic i have a responsibility to integrate my activism with my writings and also intellectual endeavors so in this context i see them complementing each other and what i write also has has to have a meaning on what i speak and how i connect with the people so therefore you know i make it a point to bring my writing my activism and writings in popular you know newspapers and i often write in different uh, platforms educating people about dalit oppression and also the caste exploitation and the way in which the everyday violence makes them victims of this you know caste based violence and exploitation yeah basically as an historian i write on the history of dalits and uh, my first book dalits and the making of modern india is published by oxford university press in 2017 and uh, afterwards i recently translated a seminar dalit text called gabilam which that means bat and uh, it's a text written by a very famous dalit intellectual in telugu called gurram jashua and the uh, gabilam represents the dalit oppression and dalit predicament in on the eve of india's independence 
and how basically dalits are oppressed and the exploitation and it's a very interesting text which not only narrates dalit oppression but also brings in the historical experience of dalits in the forefront so i translated that very interesting you know uh, classical telugu text into english and it was published in 20, 2002 and uh, in 2014 in fact in the march i uh, the translated text got a very famous prize called association for asian studies translation prize ak ramanujan prize in 2024 so like this text is recognized worldwide in terms of its seminal contribution and now i'm currently writing a book on the long duration history of caste in india how the fundamental argument is that you know, throughout history of india at different phases and different periods of history caste was central to the idea of making up state and caste is the foundation on which all the other aspects of society were formed uh, as an academic uh, because i am one of the rare uh, academic and uh, uh, also i do lot of advocacy in terms of caste equity and caste oppression i get get to invite to different universities particularly april being the dalit history month and i often travel to different universities and institutions to deliver lectures about dalits and also the importance of dalit history and dalit activism and for example in april i was at university of houston in texas and afterwards i was at princeton then uh, i went to uh, nashville uh, to speak at vanderbilt university and uh, even in canada i often travel to places like university of toronto and vancouver and different places so this way you know my academic writings and also my activism gets informed to people both academics and also community members across north america like you know, uh, one of the important aspect about as i said the representation of indian diaspora south asian diaspora is represented by the mainstream uh, privileged caste hindus in this context what happens is that the caste oppression and caste based discrimination gets not only ignored but also completely erased so in this context i founded an organization called south asian dalit and adivasi network along with a fellow dalit named vijay puli in toronto so we both uh, you know together by forming this organization we started organizing seminars and also different workshops to educate people about caste system and also caste is not just left in india in fact there are people in canada and north america who are victims of caste discrimination and exploitation and prejudice and uh, if you want to follow what happened in north america for example in california state the cisco technologies was sued and that became a very important uh, you know international news because you know for the first time caste discrimination was acknowledged so in this context you know even in canada like in vancouver toronto and calgary there are many dalits who basically who face this insidious caste discrimination and prejudices so that's why in, particularly in schools for example toronto district um, school board uh, in 2022 recognized caste discrimination and asked uh, ontario human rights commission to develop a policy frame on dealing with the caste discrimination so finally you know uh, in 2023 uh, ontario human rights commission came up with a policy framework to deal with caste discrimination both in public and private sectors in ontario so this way you know southern as an organization community organization represented by you know oppressed caste people we are educate not only educating people but also advocating both at different levels for the government to recognize caste discrimination and also frame policies through which to protect the human rights and dignity of dalits in canada yeah but the future of dalit like you no know, one thing is that you know uh, because of dalit uh, black lives matters and also the questions of indigeneity and exploitation like oppressed voices across the world are coming to the forefront and both immigrants and also indigenous people and also caste oppressed dalits and uh, you no know, like roma people and borokami people 
and also different communities from across the world now found a voice to advocate and also argue about their sub- oppression and in this context what i see is that you know there is an inter- interesting dialogue at global level by the voices of the dalits are uh, by not only dalits but also different oppressed communities so in this context what you see is that you know there is a growing number of dalit migration to both north america and also to canada so in this context the canada and united states there is a lot growing population of dalits across you know states and regions so in this context as dalit presence is growing and also what you see is that you know the awareness about the caste system not only among south asian diaspora but also non south asian and non indian population are also coming to know so in this context what i see is that the future of caste advocacy in canada particularly is that you know it is going to make a very important dent into the very idea of multiculturalism and if you really want to address the problems both violence against women and also the insidious violence within communities like south asian communities it is very important to have the policy through which caste lens has to be framed and caste oppressed people needs to be made part of any sort of policy frameworks government or provincial governments or federal government is trying to make so in this context it's very important to protect the canadian institutions and canadian public you know for democracy it's very important that you know we need to acknowledge caste and also caste based discrimination within canadian society thank you